right. It, all right. Well, God's presence, God's blessings are for you and in you. They are near for you. That's it. God's presence, His blessings in your life, they're there. They're working in you. They're working even through you. They are with you. In our gospel reading today, Jesus is sending His disciples out to the villages around. And it doesn't say a lot about what they're going to do or certainly nothing about what they're supposed to say. But we can look back and, and say, well, they're Jesus' disciples. He's been teaching them. They are followers of Jesus. So the things that he's been doing and saying, they're supposed to bring that out to the people in surrounding villages. That's a pretty straight-up thing. And I think for Mark's gospel in particular, the core of the message is that the kingdom of God was near. And I'm going to kind of reduce the kingdom of God. It's not perfect, but it's, it's going to work for us today that that kingdom is talking about God's presence and blessing in their lives. That God is there present for those people and God's blessings are in their lives. Now the people he was speaking to, that these disciples went out and gave this message to, thought precisely the opposite. They thought God was far God's kingdom was far, and thus God's presence and blessings weren't there for them. Because if they were there, things would be different. Because I think they measured their sense of whether God was for them against them about how it was going in their lives. That was their little radar. Well, it's not going well in my life. You know, this stuff's messed up over here. Uh, you know, I'm not very, you know, I've been sick too often. I'm not, you know, having the money or prosperity that I want in my life. You know, all this stuff's missing. Therefore, that means God's blessing and presence aren't there for me. Makes sense, isn't it? Yeah. But Jesus is having his disciples go out and say, you're wrong on this. That, in fact, God's kingdom the presence and blessing of God is there for you folks, for all you folks. Well, today I think we often can follow in these same patterns of thinking that those people did back then. That it can happen pretty fast to us that we kind of judge God's closeness or distance and all that sort of thing by how we're doing in our lives. So if we're facing one bad event after another bad event, we've messed up, that's probably a sign that God really doesn't have much to do with us. We've blown it. Maybe we're being punished. God is missing. The modern, you know, is God doesn't even exist. The same around our health. If we have some health issue and, and, and we're fighting with that and it's just not going away and the doctors don't seem to be helping us, again, it's a sign, well, God, where are you? And then we open our Bibles and see all these things Jesus did to heal this person and that person. And we say, well, Jesus, you healed all these people. Why aren't you healing me? How did you forget me, Jesus? I mean, look at all these good stories of you healing everybody. Well, I want to stop right there and deal with that whole thing a little bit, that healing of Jesus. He did heal people. Uh, and God's blessings can come through to us in a healing. It's a great thing. But I want you to go back and just imagine how many people did Jesus heal in the Bible? If you look at the three Gospels or, and, and, and John, the three Gospels are very similar, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and they have all parallel stories. If you add up all those people and then you add up the people in John that he's healed, I don't think you're going to get very many, maybe 25. I don't think it's that many. It said he did a bunch more, so let's add more. Let's say Jesus in his ministry healed 500 people over three years. And how many people were in Israel that were sick at those very times and didn't get any healings of Jesus? Well, I suspect quite a few more than that. And I suspect one of the things we never heard about Jesus is that someone was healed by Jesus and then they got sick again and Jesus healed them a second time. And I suspect every one of the people Jesus heals got sick again. Don't you? How can you get through this life without multiple sicknesses or injuries or something going wrong? You can't. And eventually, all of them died. 
What I'm pressing you at to consider is that maybe we get the sense that God is going to do great things for us and heal us, or at least should do those things, that we interweave that with God's presence with us too tightly. That those things need to be pulled apart. Not completely apart, but pulled away a little bit. That God's kingdom, with its God's presence in that and God's blessing in our lives, is more than getting healed. That there's something greater and more important than that going on with it. That, in fact, even when one bad thing happens after another, that God is still there for us and with us. That, in fact, if we have a chronic illness that isn't going to be fixed or healed, that even there, God's presence and God's blessings can be there. And I hope that gets you asking the question, well, how does that work, Pastor? I think it works through other people. That's how it works. And that's precisely why he's sending his disciples out. They're not perfect. They're flawed people. They have their strengths and weaknesses, just like the rest of us here. But he's sending them out to be vehicles, to be messages that God is yet present, even when it doesn't fix even when it's broken, even when you've blown it, that God is still present and with you. It's a huge thing to know it. That's why we've gathered here today. To have some little bit of a snippet, some word maybe, that's beyond just a nice thought of the pastor up front, that some connection comes that hits us from God. A divine moment that says, you know what? Yeah, that's a word from God. God's kind of spoken to me today. That's crazy. That's the divine presence right there, isn't it? And then we come up as a community and we gather around this altar and we put our hands up because there it is again. This food that somehow there's something divine in it. Some inkling there's something more for us and we are blessed by these signs, through each other, because we are that community that says God's actions, His words, and His presence can be known even when things don't go well. We certainly want to say that about Jesus. He was crucified, did not end well for Him, but we say that darkness of His crucifixion, crucif crucifixion is the backdrop for the love that He shows for us. That even in the darkness of this world, the light of God's love and presence and blessings can show up there. Well, we as a church in this country and in this culture have had a lot of decades, if not centuries, where we could kind of just, you know, open our doors, build it, and they will come. People would come. Uh, and it still happens, and it, you know, can happen, and it will keep happening to some extent, but it was a time when the culture was much more supportive of what it meant to be a Christian in a church. That even on a Sunday morning like today, you know, people would just get up and know, yeah, I'm going to church. It's just what you did. You didn't even think about it much. But as we know, that culture's changed. There's a million things you could do on any given morning, and particularly a Sunday morning. And you think, I bet some of you did today, well, should I go to church today? Well, well let me think about that a little bit. Well, I could do these other things. I could be, you know, there's all kinds of things we can do and be, and we could feel those poles of our culture and it's what's going on in it pulling us in different directions. It's just the way it is. The culture's changed. And that's why I think it's important to remind ourselves that there's something about this being sent out. And remind ourselves that that, in fact, is a sign that God's presence and God's blessings come through us to everywhere we're out there in the world. Yes, us. You and me. And I think there's all kinds of ways we want to say, well, no, sort of, or kind of, or probably not, all that kind of stuff. But I want to adjure you, not just because Jesus sent us out there to do it, but I think there's some huge needs that Jesus cares about. I'm going to just pick on one today, and that's the fact that our culture gets increasingly 
lonely. They're charting the trend. We're getting more isolated, and people are experiencing more loneliness out there. And loneliness hits us more than just kind of this little uh, psychological ache. That that psychological ache actually has huge physiological impact that they have done studies on loneliness out there, and they show that being lonely is equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes a day on your physical health. And that as it increases, people are dying because of the loneliness and its effects on their bodies and the deterioration of their bodies are dying in a great abundance because they're lonely. So we, as God's people, are sent out to do what? To connect. To be that little sign out there in the world for the people around us. That God's presence is there for them. It's not even just me, which is a big deal connecting to them, just doing that. But we can let them know there's even something more. God's there for them. And through us, they'll know some sense of blessing in their life. A care. A need met. A word said. That is the vision of Jesus that we're seeing unfold today. Not just that he does it, but he has us do it. One of our things as a a church for decades now has been that we are a community. And that we create community is kind of the new way we're talking about that. A place where people are known and they know us. A place where people care and they are cared for. That that kind of sense of interaction for us is what we need and what we're called to foster here. And we're doing this belonging pathway things and all these things to try to help us get there. And we still have lots of room to improvement. It's who we are. This kingdom of God's presence and God's blessing comes through those relationships, the sense that we're belonging. So I'd ask you when you're in here to make sure you know everybody belongs and they took care about them. And when you go out of here, you might think, well, I kind of left that God church thing behind, and I'm heading on my way, and it just kind of falls off the radar screen. Uh, And you might feel like God's kingdom is far to know that you're wrong. (laughs) You are wrong. You may not even be thinking about it. It may not be on your radar screen, but God's presence And God's blessing are in you and through you to the rest of the world. And it doesn't fall off when you walk out the doors. You're it to the world. You are the ones God works through. His presence and blessing are all over you. And in you and through you.